Glad to see several people who were at the Friday session that I did with my colleague John Leisler on project-based learning. Today we will be referring actually to some of that, uh, some examples, but the focus really is about questions and about questions that, well, it says right there, purposefully develop students' thinking and social emotional learning. So that is where we're going to go today. Um, jot down, just take, a, take about two minutes and write down what questions mean to you. When you, think, when you think of asking them or you're planning to ask questions, what kind of questions you ask? What do you think about when you ask questions? Okay, let's share a few of these. Um, I'll just start right here. Um, I always do the mistake of uh, raising the question to get the right answer. Uh-oh, raising the question to get the right answer. Okay, so those good old right answer questions. Thank you for bringing that up right away, because that's a good thing to think about. Here's a seat, and here's two, I think. I don't know if somebody's sitting here. Somebody's sitting here, but here's one. One. And here's a good seat right here. Please come. And there's a seat right there in the middle. Oh, that's you. Is that you? No, this is now you. Okay. You better come and retrieve your seat. Okay. All right, another one, please. Another question about questions or thoughts about questions. Go ahead. For me, when I ask a question, I'm looking for clarification or knowledge. Okay, clarification or knowledge. Actually, something's going to come up about that today. What else? I'll bring up something that I just learned today, which was that I spend, we spend far too much of our time asking questions when it should be students. <laughs> yeah, how do you get the students to actually ask the question? Uh, questions should lead to more questions. Questions should lead to more. You should be able to dig and dig and dig. Um, anybody else? Go ahead. Uh, we usually make sure they are factual, conceptual. Factual, conceptual. Debatable can be, okay. And open-ended, so we've got open-ended over here and we've got the one right answer. You brought that up. So these are two very important things about questions. Please come in and we'll get you some chairs, okay? We have all these helping people around. Let's get some. What about essential questions? Okay, hold that thought while I get some chairs. Would you tell them to get more chairs? Okay, all right, thank you. All right, we have one more b idea back here. An essential question. What did we ask at the beginning of the class? <laughs> and the answer and the, related to the whole the, this uh, lesson of that class. Okay, that's a very good one to bring up too. Anybody else have one more? Another thought about questions. So. Go ahead. Uh, questions that connect between the learning and uh, like what we do in life. Yep, connecting questions. Things that, what do you know and how does it connect something new to that? One more. Let's just do one more while they're setting up chairs. Anybody else? Another thought? Say it again. Which help a student to, uh, let's say, to make research. Yes. Yes. Those research questions. When you are going to dig in to information, that's another kind of question that's really, really important. Okay, let's take a look. Hold all those things, please. And as we go through the morning, or the, oh, we're in the afternoon now, <laughs> we're going to take, you'll hear some of that come up, and then we'll, you can ask more questions about that. So, what do you see? What do you notice? And some of you have seen this picture before on Friday. We did use it on Friday. I'm looking at it in a little bit different way today. What do you see? Um, I can see there is something um, like he doesn't know what what under this like mountain. Yeah, you can't even see his face, and yet you're saying he doesn't know something. Okay, you're looking at this environment around here, and you're able to figure out. I bet he doesn't know something. 
Okay, and he could be reflecting. What else? What else do you see? He raises the question, and there are many directions to answer. Okay, so you're saying he looks like he's asking some questions. Meditation. What? Meditation. Just standing <gasps> up the, the mountain, and he's just thinking about things deeply in a different way. Thinking about things deeply. Mm -hmm. Exactly what we would like our kids to do. Mm. He's standing in the right place. Uh, uh, some, somewhere uh, he can see everything. So he's elevated. Yes. You can look out over and see things. So hold that thought too about looking over and thinking about what it is you're deeply interested in. Anything else? Go ahead. These two back here. Oh, a little bit louder. Yeah, a state of wonder. For sure, what a great word to use. I think he's at, uh, in a high place looking at things from a different perspective, at the bigger picture. Okay, very nice. This elevation gives him a very different perspective on what he's doing. The wondering. How many of us would like our kids to wonder? That would be a great thing to get them wondering again. Like they did when they were in kindergarten when they were four, when they were even in first grade maybe, before we start hammering in the right answers, okay? So how do we get them to wonder again? What a great project that will be for you to do in your school. Anything else you want to say about this painting? It also and looks like he's already climbed something. Yeah, we don't know how tired he is. We don't know how long it took him to get up there. We just know he's there. And then we can imagine all the things that are happening to him. This painting is called The Wander Amid the Fog. We're like that. We're very much like that. And our students are definitely like that. But we want them to have that good feeling about being in the fog, about wondering and where can they go next. And how can I find out? And knowing that there's things they don't know. And curiosity would be a really nice thing for them to develop too. Now, when the wanderer, all of a sudden today, I took a look at that. Do you see any connections? Okay, any connections between the Wanderer and the logo for this whole conference? What do you think? Go ahead. I think she's trying to look over the wall to see what's behind it, wondering what it could be behind the rings. Yes, this is her wall. And she's just trying to peek out over there. How do I get out of this? barrier of grades and Taljihi, which I have a hard time with. Imagination. Yes! Her imagination and her thinking of what her things, so she's it trying to climb over. Exactly. Did you have another comment? Do you want to add to that? Okay, so this is what I was thinking about this too. I had not thought of it at all till I came over here and had a quick muffin this morning. And, all, and I was where I was standing, I was looking at that and I thought, that looks like the wanderer to me. She's also climbing. She's also peering out over the top. Hopefully, and I think, she's wondering, like, am I going to be like this forever? Or are we going to make some changes that allow me to wonder again and to find out stuff and want to know things? So, what? <laughs> IT person, how do I get rid of it? Just hit the X? <laughs> Don't go away. That, he promised me he was not going to leave me. <laughs> there. <laughs> I've told them that after 30 years of making presentations all over the world, this is the best place ever. This is the best. They provide so much help for us. IT people in the room, oh my goodness. 
anyway, all right. <laughs> so just a little shout out to this particular conference center, okay? All right, so what's the purpose of asking questions? Let's get some ideas. What's the purpose of it? To get answers. To get answers. To engage students. Engage. Challenge. Their own Challenge. See their understanding. Okay, and to assess their understanding, of course. Generate a new one. Pizza. Say that again. Solve a problem. Solve a problem. Right. Find a problem. Yeah. And then solve a problem. Build up our knowledge. Yes. And give students effective role numbers. Okay. Put it down. Write that down. Getting different perspectives. Getting different perspectives. That's about questions too. Knowing what Oh, this is a nice one to think about, knowing what I already know. And then I can start thinking about, what do I not know? And you can start going forward then. Did you have another? Go ahead. Uh, learn from new generations and discover about them from their places. Okay, can I use the word discover? Yes. You discover things from that. You learn new things, but discover is a huge word. Questions is a key. Keys for, for a lot of things. For research, oh, questions are, 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 are keys? Yeah. Are keys. Yeah. yeah. Questions yeah. are keys for lots of other things, for going in more directions. Well, I got this. We're now going to talk about some research and views and frameworks of asking questions. And I was interested in this from the teaching center at the Washington University in St. Louis. And they have a very simple way of looking at questions. Let's take a look. Hmm. Closed questions. Did we mention that at the beginning? We did, the where you have the answer. It's already there. Yes, you have a right answer, and that's it. It's over. I answered it. We're done. Let's see what else they say. A limited number of correct answers is a, one of the characteristics of this. It tests students' comprehension and retention of important information. Okay, that's good, isn't it? It's absolutely necessary. And I love this term, I've never thought of this before, managerial questions. What do you think a managerial question is? Managerial. I think they are the questions that you ask in order to get to the point that you want. Okay, and even more specific, to just simply find out, do you understand the directions? <laughs> you know, who, could, who can repeat back or who can tell us what we're supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Those are the manager questions that teachers are managers. I mean, we're not only supposed to give, put people ahead intellectually, but we have to manage a lot of stuff in the classroom. Um, Behavior is one of them. So having a question about behavior would be a managerial question. Now, these are closed questions. What do you think is going to be next? Guess what? There they are. All right? Open-ended questions. Characteristics prompts multiple and sometimes conflicting answers. That's so uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Teachers have to then manage that. How are you going to get that? Um, for, in fact, on Friday it was interesting. We were sharing some things, and one of the um, one of the examples people were sharing was built around history. We had already had several people share. Oh, somebody sh shared on math. Fine. Somebody shared on science. Didn't raise any eyebrows, but when we got to history, remember? Whoa! It, the room exploded with different ideas about how you look at certain historical events. So this is something we want, but it's also something a bit on the scary side. And how we are able to finesse that and how we are able to help kids not yell at each other or call each other names 
and be able to consider points of view that are different. It's very, very hard to do. And here's another thing about open questions, encourages discussion and active learning in the classroom. So closed and open. So there's one framework for looking at questions. Now let's look at another one. And I like this man with this framework. Richard Paul, he has done all so much work in critical thinking. I used his work in my dissertation a lot. Um, he's, he's good, this man is very good. And he has put together six types of Socratic questions. So let's take a look at what they are. And some of them are what you mentioned at the very beginning. Questions for clarification. That's one kind. Questions that probe assumptions. You know how when your kids are saying something <coughs> and it's like, what? Really? Um, maybe we should look at what you're thinking and where you got that information. So helping kids look at their assumptions, things that they think they know, but not necessarily do. Questions that probe reasons and evidence. This is a huge one in the Common Core in the United States. Making sure that when kids have discussions or they write, that they are backing up their comments and their ideas with evidence from the text, from their experience. I want my kids to give me examples. When they tell me something, don't just tell me something in general. Tell me exactly an experience you've had that gives you that information. So this is a very important one, reasons and evidence. Questions about viewpoints and perspectives. That's been mentioned already this morning. Viewpoints and perspectives. Questions that probe implications and consequences. What will happen if? If we do this, what could be a consequence of that? This is a very high level or deep level of thinking to be able to look ahead and forecast that. It is one of the most difficult things. If it were not, if it were easier, don't you think that we would have less negative implications and consequences in our world? It's like nobody can do this. So this is really an important thing to be able to learn. Now let's take a look what's next. Oh, questions about the questions. What does that mean? Questions about the questions. To dig deep Say it again. To dig deep yes, to dig down deeper, to ask another question that even goes more. How about asking questions about the quality of the question? Is this the question that you really want to ask here to get where you're going? We've been helping students um, there, in our, in, at King's, there's a capstone um, class now. It came out of AP, and it's all project work. And it comes to the point where they're doing their writing. The teacher cannot help them anymore. No more revising or no more of the teacher giving feedback. So they go around and find us, who are not teaching them, to give them feedback on their writing and help them edit. And so one of the things I've learned from a person who is a great editor and help in helping kids with this, is she says to them, um, is this really what you want to say? What is it you want to say? And then you try to bring that out of them. OK, write it. Mm. Because in, they usually can always say it, but it doesn't get down on the paper exactly the same way. So questions about the questions. Is that the question you really want to ask? Now, thinking back to the Washington University, open and closed, where do you think these questions belong? 
Yep, these are all open questions. Richard Paul works in critical thinking and in open questions where you're going to have multiple answers. Oh, and, our, and we know this, don't we? Yeah. Bloom's taxonomy. There's nobody in the world that doesn't know Benjamin Bloom, right? Benjamin Bloom, who came up with this in the 50s, and he states knowledge, and I, it says level of complexity. So knowledge. I have never thought of knowledge as being at the bottom of any ladder. How do we get knowledge? I wouldn't call it the bottom. I think it's the base. OK, all right. That's a very good thing. It's a base. It could also be the end product. After you've done all these other things, you might really have some knowledge. So we have to think about this, about this ladder deal. Comprehension, being able to show that you understand. Application, problem solving. Now, apply the law of supply and demand to explain the current increase in fruit prices. OK. That sounds like you're solving a problem that you can probably just look it up and figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's been solved or not, that's another issue. But we have to think about how much of a problem that is. Analysis, breaking things apart. Synthesis, combining and ultimately creating an original product. And then evaluation, this business of judgment, making decisions, and assessing, evaluating. So let's keep this in mind as we move forward. I want to show you a quote. Whoops. There we go. Now, all, I'm sure most of you know that King Abdullah set up King's Academy for some very specific reasons. And in the 2012 commencement address, he said this to the kids. He looked straight at them and he said, I started this school to prepare students to think and solve the problems of Jordan. That is a really tall order. And yet, that's what the school is set up to do. And we as, who are teaching there need to be constantly reminding kids of that, to keep them serious about their work, that this is serious work you're doing, preparing you to think and solve the problems of Jordan. So I don't know, oops, just a minute, just a minute, this one that he's talking about this kind of problem. Applying the law of some supply and demand to explain the current increase in fruit prices. I think he has something kind of bigger in mind. Something much bigger. And something that is going to take another, a much wider range of thinking than that. So let's take a look at this. Keeping in mind what he's talking about, what, and it's not just the problems of Jordan, I would say the problems of the world. So I want you to take a look at this, and for those of you who are with us on Friday, um, you've already had a, had a chance with this, and if you have your paper with you, keep hold of it. I, while I pass these out, I want you to just look at that, pretend that you're looking at the wander, the artwork we looked at. What do you notice about this? What are the things that you notice? First, noticing. Second, what do you need to know to make sense out of it? One, two, three. Thank you. So this will give you time to think while I hand you out papers. Do you have your I wheel have with you? Yes. Okay, that'll be good. Do you have yours? No, okay. I'll give it to you again. Hope I have enough. One, two, three. Two, three. Here you go. Okay, keep jotting down things you notice and questions that, things that you need to know to make sense out of it. 
There you go. Hi. What? Yeah, you can actually. Ooh. Give it to me. Yeah, just a minute. I'm getting. All right, I have this many more, which is not a lot. If you can share at your table, I'm going to email all this to you anyway. So if, could I just have you share? Yeah, do you mind sharing? I'll give you one more. Where's my table full of, um, they're, uh, they're up there, I'm going to give you. This is with another packet of stuff, but I'm going to give this to you anyway. Here you go. Can you share? Yes. Put it in the middle and share. I'm going to give you this and uh, and one of the others. This is for your primary kids. Oh, thank you. But I'm still going to give you one of these. Can you share that together? Oh, thank you so much. If you only knew how much trouble I had getting these printed from the Hilton last night. <laughs> You would say, okay, but let me get a few more out then on this side. Here you go. Here you go. Give you some more. Anybody teaching um, primary, early childhood? You are eat early childhood? I'm in love with you. There you go. Early childhood for you. Early childhood? Whoa. It's different, but it, you need to, this is the one we need to look at first. The other is for your pleasure with your little kids, okay? Here you go. All right. Early childhood, you want one of those? All right. There we go. Here you go. Early childhood. All right. Now hold on to that, too. You need them both. Okay, let's take some, questions, some observations first. What do you see? Now that you have it up close, what do you notice? What do you notice? And you can start with the most obvious things. There's a lot of colors. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Very good observation. Circle. Divided in half with both labeled. What else? I don't know if the colors across are. Okay, she's saying, are the colors corresponding in some way, right? Yes, they do. And as you're looking at it, see if you can see any relationship between the segments. Hold, hold it. I got to, everybody, we got. What? Can you take another one? Oh, could. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm supposed to have a lot of pens, and I actually don't today. Um, could you find me some black pens? Thank you, and I'll change that. I need to point out that the colors are connected. Yes. How? Tell us how they're connected. Uh, he observes and he then he uh, quite thinking and he tells his thinking and that's how it's related. Excellent. That is exactly where this whole wheel started. Was understanding, thank you, that in one person's theory, uh, the, the person who has come up with this is named Guilford and, the, and he's a psychologist. The person who came up with the top is John Dewey, and I'm sure that many of you have heard of him as you're studying teaching and learning. And when I was working on my dissertation, I discovered, whoo, they do connect. They do connect. And then it becomes very helpful to see what it is we're really trying to do in the terms of thinking and social-emotional learning. Okay, what else? Another observation, please. Now that I have a black pen, let's get more. They not only collect, um, connect, but they... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can you hold on just a minute until everybody's listening? It's so hard to hear in here. Go ahead. Um, I mean, I, I see the, 
the um, connections, but I also see overlaps. Oh. I see a green that can go from the blue or a pink that goes from the orange. Okay. Not okay. Um, Thanks. Right, overlapping, going over the top of each other. Yes, and not just connecting that way. Which means that what? We think like we do, all of these things are happening all the time. This, these are basic things about learning. You, go ahead. That is really, that's very, very great thinking. That this is what you kind of acquire, and some of it you're lucky enough to acquire it in school, right? Even though we spend way too much time in school on convergent thinking, the yellow thinking, where it is the one right answer. But that's necessary too. We don't want a bunch of kids going out without knowing a single fact. That's going to be a very bad idea. But then these are the things, say it again really loudly. Yep, here is what, and you know what? A fourth grader said that once. When he looked at it and he said, oh, these are the things we do but these are the things we are. Those are the things you're trying to become. And they work together. They can work very much together. Look at the two green sections. There's evaluation and there's ethical reasoning. That ethical reasoning, what do you think? Why, do they, why are they together? Can you evaluate without those things? No. Can you evaluate without being fair? Can you make decisions without being fair and without thinking of other people? And you can't be fair without uh, analysis, comparing, uh, etc. Okay, these right here, it's the same skills to make these decisions, but here you're thinking about other people. The world is full of decisions right now, which and probably always has been, that do not take into consideration what's best for other people. They do not take into consideration empathy or appreciation. So these are things we want to help our kids understand, that this is what we're working toward. Any other comments about this? Go ahead. Uh, the color in the color theory, uh, blue is a, a deep color and um, and a color of empathy. So we okay. can't look at our uh, right here. past and not being uh, to care about ourselves. Okay, and our past. great so connection. connection. Yes, very much so. And the connections are such across all of these. Now let's think about some questions that might emerge from this, okay? What kinds of questions might you ask to help kids develop, let's say in this area of cognition, inquiry, naming, getting information, understanding, discovery, research. See if you can come up on your own with a question that might ask kids to do that, to do some of those skills. So work with the people at your group and talk about it and see if you can come up with one before we head into all of the meanings. What could you ask kids to do that would help them observe or help them discover? Okay, so you're working over here, okay? Yes. Not, okay, that's all right, as long as you pick one. I like that. 
breaks it down. Yeah. Also this is so details. nice to use with your little kids. And guess what? They can start talking about their thinking really, really well. The kids are very adept at this. The adults have a lot more trouble with it, as you can probably imagine why. It's just harder for us to, you know, get ourselves wider in our thinking. Kids, no problem. Not that by the time they're ninth graders, they want to think. <laughs> That's a different question. So, okay, let's come up with some of these questions. What did you come up with? Are you ready? Okay, let's take some examples of what you came up with. All right, go ahead. Um, when I tried to, 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 to do the question, I, I, I referred back to the Bloom's taxonomy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and that helps you. I found, defined, recalled, this goes with cognition. Actually, it goes a little bit, the defining does, the recalling kind of moves into the memory part, memory but that, so, but ask a question. Naming and defining. Okay, say a question. Help her out. A question. What observation? What? What can you see? What can you see? Oh, okay. There you go. Perfect question. In fact, it's a magic question. Use it. You will find it to be magical. In yes. And your kids are going to see things that you never even thought about. So when you show a picture, don't start explaining what's in it. What do you notice? It is magical. I think well, when we were talking in the group, I shared that for cognition. I just remembered the first activity where we did. What we did was like, what can you see? Can you name what he's thinking? We're trying to discover and understand e him and his thinking. Exactly. And I asked the question, what do you need to know to understand this better? There's another question. What do you need? Which asks them to ask you a question, right? And we were talking about that at the beginning, the importance of getting them to ask questions. Okay, let's hear another example of a question you came up with. Oh, how do you feel? And that would come out of which segment? Which one were you looking at? Yes, leading to, and how do you feel? Or how do you think that person feels? Those are questions to bring out the concept and to help them develop empathy. A very straightforward question, what did you understand? What did you understand? There it is, very straightforward. Reflection, what do you wonder? Why don't you reflect? What do you wonder? What do you wonder? Analyze the picture as well. Yes. Yes, yes, and but ask it in a question. Okay, or what are all the parts you see in this picture? You want to break apart or name all the parts you see. Very good. What? May some of you to show some part of the picture to what they stand for, what yes. they represent. Exactly. Very good. All right, so you've got it. You've kind of got the idea of this, so let's do a little practice. I'm going to give you some examples first, and then we're going to do some practicing. What time are we done here? Uh, 4.15. Okay, good. We're good. All right, let me give you a couple. Oh, go ahead. Yes, questions. Just one second until everybody is quiet. Just a minute. Okay. We were told that if we want to make questions, we have to use uh, command terms. We're, we're not supposed to ask what, where. We have to use command terms like analyze, name, this, outline. So what's the difference? What do we use? The that, the, we use? Well, <laughs> the questions that are what, who, why, when, those often are the one right answer questions. You can look in your reading book or you look and there the answer is. Um, analyze the picture. 
But when you use that term, analyze the picture, kids don't know what that means. What does analyze mean? It's very abstract. It's like, what am I supposed to do with that? Who, how can you explain analyze to kids? What do you mean by that? What can you see is going to be a starter, exactly. All the different pieces that you see, how can you break this apart? That's another thing. What are all the pieces that you see? That's what Analyze is about, is breaking it all apart, looking at it individually, and then bringing it back together again to make sense out of it. But that has to be explained to kids. We say far too often to them, especially at the high school level, analyze. <coughs> Who knows what that means, okay? So that, those things that are called commands, but that you're, you're saying, you have to be very, very careful there you understand what you're, you're asking them to do. Because you're still asking. You're just saying it in a statement. It's still a question. So let's take a look at some examples. Now, what I'll just give you briefly where this is coming from. I recently did a big project with my ninth graders who are, um, let me explain this. The class is called Language and Composition One. It's for ninth graders who come into the school who's who do not have their, their English up to a, the level that they need to to keep up with all the classes. So there's three classes like this, language and composition, one, two, and three. And this supports them in being able to write and to be able to read. While they're taking their English and their social, or their history and all, everything else, but this is helping them with the, how do these verbs go together? How do I, you know, how do I put a sentence together? How do I make a complex sentence? All of those things. So the big project we just finished is a character study. Each student um, had to interview a relative or could be a, somebody else, but usually turned out to be a relative. And they had to find out everything you can find out about people in an interview. They built questions, they went out and they interviewed them. Then they had, and a lot of it done in Arabic, and then they had to translate it into English. Then they had to type it up, the interview. Then they had to transpose all of that into an article that was based on a column in the New York Times. So this girl, Leon, worked on her her character study by interviewing her teacher. And I was very happy about that because I think that her, their teachers need much, much credit for, for their even getting to King's Academy at all. And so she was writing for, about this teacher and she named it Fighting for Being Educated because she did not have an easy time in getting her education. There were several people interviewed that their fathers did not want them to go to school. That they were to get married and they were to stay at home only and that they, they weren't able to get an education. She's one who really fought for that. And Leon was very impressed with her. So one of my questions for, for Leon and the other students were, how did you show care for yourself in the character study project. It was a really long project. We started it by planning it before Christmas. When they came back from Christmas break or winter break, they had all their interviews done and then there was that whole process that I just described. So it took a while to get these things done. And I, what, what do you think they felt like as they're working on this? Well, they're frustrated. They see that they're making mistakes and they have to revise and it's like, whew, and they're ninth graders. You know, how long can a ninth grade attention span last? You have to wonder that. So my question was, how did you show care for yourself during the character study? So that's an example of how to get into that care for yourself, the empathy for yourself. It's not just empathy for you or empathy for your grandmother, but it's also empathy for yourself. 
and being patient with yourself. What was her answer? What? What was her answer? What her answer was, I used my plan, I parsed out my time so that I would have time to do it. I was patient with myself. I went to Dr. Christie and she helped me. Those are the ways that she said she took care of herself. Thank you for asking that. Another example, this is from Colin. And he wrote about his mother. How did you, and my question is, how did you develop your information and questioning skills? Okay, now I'm down at the bottom of the circle and I'm asking a question about cognition. How did these skills get built? Somebody say, what did he say? <laughs> Let's look at it. This is what he said. I developed and asked questions for the interview. I tried to give her a lot of questions to get more information. Despite, and he could have said in, in addition, to getting information from asking her, I asked her parents, I asked her friends and her neighbors about her. I asked my big brother about my mother as well. So this is how he answered that question. What do you know about him from this answer? He doesn't know his mother very well. <laughs> he didn't know his mother very well. Okay, what else? What else do you know about him? Actually, he did not get answers from one person. Exactly. To look for this yes, he got a wide yes. variety of yes. questions from, and answers from lots of different people. I think I would presume that his communication skills would be quite good if he's able to con like have, these, have this dialogue with a variety of people. Yes, and with all of these people, some mostly in Arabic, some in English, a big variety of things going on, and then he has all this data that comes in. He has to sort it out and turn it into an article. Maybe he wants to see what others see, how others see her, his mom. Yeah. Not from his... Perspective. Yeah. He's trying to be fair. Say, say a little more He's about that. He's trying to be fair. Just not because he, this, this is his mother. He, he, he tries to be fair. Yes. Get a balanced view. Balanced view. Balanced reporting. That's what we're having here. He tried to analyze every, every answer that he gets. Mm -hmm. He does not just uh, getting yeah. enough from when Absolutely, he's quite analytical yeah. about going about this. Now, let's see what's, what we got next here. Oh, here's another question for Colin. How did you make ethical decisions in the process of writing this character study? Hmm, a ninth grader is going to answer that. Okay, let's see what they say. Respectfulness, respectfulness and honesty are skills in the thinking operation. He said thinking is really qualities of character. <coughs> Ethical reasoning. I respected my character's life and I was honest with everything that I wrote. I am sure that the information that I wrote was exactly what she told me. I respected her answers. <laughs> And because of that, nothing came from my imagination. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm always asking them to use their imagination. But in this, he knew that that really isn't what's called for here. Mm -hmm. I am really trying to be completely clear and objective and honest about this. I, I just loved reading that sentence when I found this, when I looked at his paper. I respected her answers, and oh, I already said that. I, expected, I respected other people's opinions as well when I asked them about my mother. Mm. So he's getting a sense of ethics. We're not talking about the turmoil in the world. We're not talking about the worst thing that happened in this country or that. We're talking about a character study and answering about his mother and yet, he's getting an idea of what ethics are about and what ethical reasoning is about. So this doesn't have to be really fancy stuff. 
you can do this within the work you're doing in your classrooms. It can be as simple as this, being able to recognize ethics in <coughs> writing about your mother. And one more from college. This is supposed to be orange, but it obviously didn't come out too well. How did you develop appreciation in this assignment? That's another question I ask. How did you develop appreciation? Love of art and recognizing, he says, beauty are skills in the thinking operation. Again, he, I've got to clear this up with him. Those are really the qualities of character. Appreciation. I respect that my character, his character, that's his mother. He's still calling her his character. Okay, loves drawing and she is a great drawer. I discovered a new thing about my mother. Listen to this, and it is so good to discover new things about a person that you live with 24 hours a day. What a big discovery for him. I made her draw for me to show her that I respected her love of art. I recognize that my mother is a great mother, and she handled everything. So in this simple, what, well, it was complex, but it still was a simple project for ninth graders. All of these things were developed because I asked the questions and because I set it up for them to find out these questions. It was a project where this would come out. Let's take a look at, now, these are the things that we've, um, have examples on. Now, let me just move ahead on my own computer here. Okay, so what I would like to do, I'm going to give you out some papers, different kinds of examples. I've got a, examples from a story to do. I've got examples from a couple art pieces, and I've got an example from a simple worksheet. Does anybody think you can teach thinking with a straightforward one right answer worksheet? Guess what? You can. So let's take a look at this, and I'm going to pass them out and let you start um, coming up with your questions. I'm going to give you this, which is, are the charts with question suggestions on them now. You've already made up some of your own, and now it's time to take a look at some more to help you out with this. Would you mind just passing these out? Sure. As many as will last. Here you go. Would you mind passing those out? And I think you're going to have to share again at your tables. I will make sure you have these. So as you're looking at this, I don't know if you can really see it from the back. No. You can't. You can't even see it from the front. So just take one I at your table. You have that? My room. Okay. So share with that, okay? Share, share, share. Do you mind sharing? I'll come back and give you more if we have enough. Sharing. Sharing. Hi, how are you? Sharing, sharing. Do you mind sharing? And then if, I'll give you more if there is. There you go. What, did you get, get one? Okay. Now I have a few more so I can do a little, I can give more uh, out. Thank you. Give it to others. Okay. Here you go. Okay. How about if I g What? Do you want one? <laughs> yeah. Next time I have one more going, going, gone. All right. Here you go. Okay, just take a look at this. Okay, may I have your attention? Take a look at this and find a section or a question 
that you hadn't really thought about already? Don't look yet. Don't look yet. Don't look. There you go. Don't look yet. Yep, don't look yet. Don't look yet. Everybody's not going to get everything, but you're going to get most. There you go. That's a nice. Going to give you one. Thank you. Here's one for you. Yeah. Um. Just a minute. Let's start in the back. That would be more fair, wouldn't it? Here you go. All simmer in a day. Did I give you this one yet? All summer in a day? Yeah. All summer. All summer in a day. Did you get that? No. There you go. All summer in a day. All summer in a day. Task or not yet. What? Do we have the task or not yet? <laughs> it's coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just getting this stuff out. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Here is your task, people. Whoops. There we go. All right. Okay. The task was while I was passing out. Looking at all those questions, are there any that stand out to you as, oh, I never really thought about that before? I'd like to use that one. Okay, appreciation. Okay, sometimes, yeah, that's one. Would we want to have our kids develop appreciation? Yes. Wouldn't we? Now, what a difference would that make if they could appreciate what they learn? Okay, somebody else, something that stood out for you or you thought, hmm, that sounds like a really good set of questions to ask. How do you show respect and kindness, helpfulness, and courtesy as well? Okay, and that comes out of empathy. the empathy area. Would we like to have kids have more empathy? Yeah. I think yeah. so. What else? What are some others? Questions that just kind of, oh, you know, I think I might like to ask that sometime soon. Anybody? Yes, again, the appreciation one. Okay, this is your task. I always ask if we had a task. Here's your task now. All right. Our task is going to be to use these samples, and I have one more to come and pass around to you, but you have enough to keep you started now. Um, your task is, just a minute. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you. Now this is one you do not have, okay? This is a worksheet. And I'm giving you as, this as an example because this looks like the kind of worksheet that doesn't really foster a great amount of <coughs> diverse thinking. But in fact, it can help there if you ask the right questions. So I'm, one of the things I've found is that when you are using a worksheet, which of course you don't have and you can't see that, um, just take a look at it. You all know what a straight up worksheet looks like. The very first thing you need to do 
hand them out, and then you say, what do you think is the first question? Yes, that's it. What do you notice? Start reading it, take a look at it, give them a 30 seconds or a 60 seconds, and then you ask what again? What do you notice? What do you notice about this? Why is that going to help get a little thinking going? Here you go, this one. Worksheet, plain old worksheet. Plain old worksheet, here you go. Okay, so we have one suggestion so far. Oh, two, in fact. Read it through, take a look. And then what do you see? Somebody tell me why that is important. And what kind of thinking is that going to help kids develop? Why should you do that? We don't usually do that. We just hand out the paper. We read the directions to them. There you go. Why doing it this way, is, why is that going to be at all helpful? It you helps them to know what they're going to do before they, because usually kids, especially at ninth grade and eighth grade, they, you give them a worksheet and they assume they know what the, it's going to be there and they start doing it and then they discover that. They <laughs> that they're doing it wrong, it wrong yes. right? Okay. Let them reflect a little bit on that work, on what it is you're asking them to do. I'm not an educator, but I feel that generally students don't always listen to instruction. So if you ask it, they have to focus. No, they don't. How many of us listen to instructions? Raise your hand if you're a great instruction listener. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> the only time I'll listen is if I need to know something. Yes. And if I'm aware that I need to know it. Otherwise, you just go ahead and give the instructions all day. It yeah. doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, I think the importance of this question, it's not on, only for the students. It's, only for the, it's also for the teacher. So when I would ask them, what do you notice? I'm just like, because we all teacher, we assume that students know because they did it before and the, <laughs> it's like the third or fourth time. So we assume that they know. So asking them what you noticed, it's like giving me a feedback of yes. are they noticing, do they know, know what to do? Or very, very nice. It kind of pre-assesses yeah. what their understanding is right now. It also gets their attention. If you talk to them, you lose their attention. I'm sorry, that's just what happens when you're working with ninth graders. But if you ask them to tell you, then your chances of them understanding it and actually doing it correctly goes way up. They so, feel what? Because they feel appreciated yes. What they think matters. That might be a quote you all might want to write that down for the day because that is a really important thing. That it makes the kids feel like what I say matters. Mm -hmm. And it also means that you want to hear something they say. That's really good. I matter in this room. Okay, so that's a very simple thing. Something you can do tomorrow when you go into your classes and when you're working with them. Take a look and see what happens when you do that very simple little thing. Now, what the next job for you is, some, you, most of you all, I think, have this picture, painting. You don't have this yet, but I'm gonna pass it out to you. You have a story that I do not expect you to read the whole story, but I think you can at least read the first page and base your questions on the first page. I would recommend you look up this story online and use it with your kids. It is a fabulous story of bullying on Venus. Yes, yes. 
The whole story's online. What you have right now is taken right offline. Excellent story to use with your kids. I'd say fourth grade up. This I have to let you, I'm just going to put this up here for you to attack the physics and math. If you're physics and math people, try these out. Okay, what, are you, what is the product going to be here? Questions that we're going to ask the students. Exactly. Questions that you can ask them about this, and you need to be able to support that question by telling what kind of thinking that m will help the students develop, okay? And you're gonna ask questions, not maybe for every one of them, but you need some questions about thinking processes and questions about the qualities of character that are gonna help them develop that also. Um, question, is there any question about what your task is for the next 10 minutes? So it's just basically asking questions or make, asking questions from here? Or yeah. Can we make also questions you can make your own questions, but you need to be able to defend what kind of thinking that you're, is going to be developed from that, okay? You may use these for start-offs, Help yourself. It's from this picture and from? Uh, from this and this, and I'm going to give you another one. Yes. Yes. So you might read, I would suggest you read the first page of it and start and come up with your questions. And then the, the same with this. And if you have time, you can do this one. Okay? The first priority, this and this, and if you have time, this one. Okay? If you're math and physics, skip this and go to that. All right? <laughs> you're going to start there? Then that's what you need to do. Then I'm going to not give you this because you, that gives you three things to do. That's enough. Okay, you've got this project, you've got this. You've got your, do you have all summer and a day? Yeah, okay. I would read a one page of it. Read it out loud so you guys can, so you can hear it. Yes, yes, let me just, so do you want to have another artwork? Okay, okay, so take that one. If you're physics and math, do that. Okay, you have two things to do. This was my sample. You're going to have this, and you're going to have this for questions. Then if you're physics and math, do that, those problems. If not, you may have another painting. Take a painting. Okay, so you have this, and you've got your summer in the day. Those are the ones I want you to work on first. Developing questions that you, if you're using this painting with your students, it actually goes like that or if you're using this story with your students, what are some questions you might use? Are you, would you want to do the math and physics problem or just these or another piece of art? This is enough for now? Okay. Okay, you've got your story. You've got your art. It's a long one. Don't read the whole thing. Read the first page. Okay. That's all. Don't read the whole thing. And then? Then you're developing questions based on that. Yes. And use this kind of for your guide so that you can um, defend what kind of thinking that you're... How about this one? Does that have any relation with the... No, none at all. Two separate, complete different things. Do you want to do the math and physics one? Oh, you're going to the yeah, airport. Well, you. do go to the airport. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Thank you. So you're good. Yes. All right. So you're understanding what you're doing here? Yes. So okay. We're coming up with questions. Yes. For this, this, and you want to do the physics and math one that's up on the board, or would you like another artwork if you have time? Another artwork. All right. Oh, I love this one. All right. So these are the ones for you. All right. You're welcome. Where's all your art? Where's your papers? Oh, here we go. <laughs> You've got this. Yeah. So you don't have the Mondrian? Yeah, you must. No? Yeah. The Mondrian. That's the one with all the lines. I must have run out. Can I give you this instead? Okay.
You're leaving, leaving on the plane yeah, too. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, you're going to do it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What do you want us? I want you to come up with questions based on the story, which I think you have, right? Yeah. The all summer, and the artwork. Okay. Okay. And you can help as long as you can until your yeah. plane is off and away. Okay. So you got this. Yes. Did you and a Mondrian? Okay. Do you want to do the math problems? Yeah, we did it. You already did it. Do you have questions for it? Uh, Okay, and now you're going to develop how you're going to lead kids through it. Yep, please do. I found the story fascinating. Oh, it's just the best. I love this story. It's the best with the kids. But you don't have to read it all. Read enough to get some questions going. Okay, and then do you have a Mondrian? Did I give you that? I ran out. So can I give you this one instead? There you go. You can also do the math problem. All right. Okay. Isn't it good? Don't you love it? Don't read it all. Only the first page. You just need this first little bit. Yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. And read it out loud, and then you can all hear. And you know what you're doing? This story. And I, you don't have a Mondrian, but this is good. Work with this one, and I'll go get you another artwork. Unless you would like to do the math problems. No, it's okay. I'll do this. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Questions coming? Yeah. Or do you want help? We need help. All right. Here we have the You've got your qualities of characters. Okay. We, we need to think. How to develop these characters? Yeah, our right. Or, or the, the thing. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Based on this story, don't read the whole thing. Like a page is yeah, good yeah, enough. Yeah. You got, you've got the idea. Yeah. And then what? If you're using with the kids, what questions would you ask for, to develop these different kinds of thinking and social emotional learning? And if you'd like to really focus up here, because this, this is what. Works. How okay. To show appreciation for okay. The environment because they're about oh, that's a good one. That's a really good. Sounds like you're you're good. Yeah. All right. So I don't need to come and help. I would actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know I would. <laughs> with this one, we focused on empathy, especially with mm. what happens to the little girl, mm -hmm. uh, and to ask them to put themselves maybe in the feet of, of the children. Uh, they could also then reflect on it. Nice. What they would do to make it to, to mm -hmm. you know, what would happen next? Okay, so write out your questions. So the question. Yes, you need to write your questions. Not just say what is in there, but. How do you drag that out of the kids? Because okay. that's the most important thing. Okay, so for the art, uh, yeah, be sure you ask the questions. On not just say, well, this fits, this fits, this fits. But what questions are you going to ask to draw that out of the kids? How are you doing? Did you look up the story online? Okay, yeah, just choose one of them because we're probably not going to have time to do all of them, but do as many as you can, okay? Did you read this? At least the first page? I couldn't focus. I know, it's too noisy. <laughs> now we know how kids feel in a classroom. But, uh, to be honest, I didn't understand the whole idea of okay. this one. All right, let me ta explain that a little bit. We often and use worksheets with kids. They're not the, they don't promote a very wide range of thinking, usually. You know, they're, they'll have right answers, and you're finding out important stuff. Do they understand, in this case, parts of speech? Do they understand how to correct sentences? That's good. It's an important thing to know. But to make them get a little bit more thinking out of this, 
to ask them to just simply take 30 seconds to look at it quietly without talking to anybody else and then ask them what do you notice about this worksheet. The other question that we didn't come and they what would they say when you ask them what do you notice? What kinds of things might kids say? Yeah, there, oh, I see that we're going to fill in some blanks. What else? What do you... Identify a sentence part, mm -hmm. the Okay. Identify the sentence parts, then they're going to come down here and do some corrections down here. And another question you can ask is, have, we ever done, have you ever seen anything like this before? You know, when have we done something like this before to get them thinking about how they're going to do this one? But I'm not exactly sure about this. We, uh, students love something like correcting sentences. They do. Psychological, we love to correct some mistakes <laughs> for someone that's else. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. You are fun. That's very fun. Yes, because it happens with, with one of my students. Uh -huh. That's why. Um, well, and you know, it's very concrete. It's something that it's going to get done. Yeah. So they can do it right now, and they like that. I think that works that's out. That's a challenge as well. Yeah, exactly. They enjoy a challenge. Yeah. And I think that to add a little bit more with that is really great. You know, to add some more thinking. Okay, we're going to have to end very soon. So I'd like to draw you all back for just a moment because so many of you have to go catch airplanes and what have you. So share for just a minute at least one question from one of your resources that you came up with. Let's start with that group, okay? Oh, just one second till everybody's ready. Okay, with the story. Okay, nice, very nice, another one. Uh, in whose place? The girl? Yeah, girls. Okay, the little girl's place. Um, about this picture. Okay, the, ho the whole buying picture. Um, what the use of combining such things together, so, say scientific things with the instru musical instruments, and if they want, if they have the chance to change something, what will they do? Ooh, two great, great questions. What kind of thinking are you helping them develop? Um, it's about Diversion thinking, mm -hmm. one of them. Very nice. Calidators by trying something new. And also maybe, maybe it's also diversion thinking, maybe. It could be about Well, and it's also the, what's the, when you ask him why is it all down here, you're asking him to do some connecting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very nice, very nice. Good examples. Another group. Okay, the Mondrian. Questions. For example, we can say, can you make connections with what was studied and this figure? If uh, they, are they, they are learning about geometric figures, for example. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. You took math. You made it into a math problem. Very nice. Very nice. Another one. Another piece of art. Or can't hear. Oh, we can't hear. Stand up and maybe shout. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What do you already know that this suggests to you? Great. Another one. Go ahead, right here. So if you were Loud. If you were a curator, which one would you choose to display and why? Whoa. So, what kind of thinking are you helping them develop? Yep. And give the evidence for it. Very nice. Um, you had one. Yes. About this one. Okay, Holbein again. What do you think the painter or, or the artist is trying to sell us? Oh, that's nice. What's the message? This is a yes. history question. Yes. History. You can use this in your class. Yes. Very, very nice. And the thinking processes that you're helping them develop by that question? Uh, Ooh. <laughs> I'll give you a minute. Okay, one more. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody wait. Shh. 
Okay, go. Um, why do you think that these shapes is, uh, are interconnected with each other? And which the colors which stand for what? Very, very nice. Okay, I think you have a very good sense now of expanding your questions and becoming more aware of why you're asking those questions. What kind of thinking are you trying to help these kids develop? We want a lot more thinking coming out of our schools, coming out of our individual children, and a lot more of the top of the circle, of the social emotional, really starting to figure out how do I ask that and get them thinking about that. So, what did you learn? Just give me one thing, this table. What did you learn today? Never lose a sense of wonder. Never lose a sense of wonder, excellent. Uh, oh, so many things. The uh, importance of asking the wrong questions and the appreciating those questions. Okay. Wrong, sorry, getting the, the wrong answers and appreciating them. Okay, getting wrong answers is not a bad thing either. Because then you can turn that around and help them get towards the answer that, they, that you're thinking that they need to understand. One thing you learned. Uh, I learned some new ways of forming questions. Okay, great. Very helpful. Great, great. Yes. How do you think it's giving me the smart questions? Okay, okay. Okay, variation, that's what we want. Variation, and we want to understand why we're asking. I'm going to ask questions that raise more questions. Yes, that is exactly what you want. Questions that get more questions. I'm, I'm sorry, I was actually questioning the questions. You want to question the questions? <laughs> I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back. Acceptance. Acceptance. Oh, wait, listen, you've got to hear this. Acceptance. This leads us to, to accept any answer without, you know, criticizing others. Okay, accepting. Except, but remember, we do not, if when something clearly is wrong or makes no sense, we have to guide them into what will. But accepting people's opinions. Excellent. People, we got to quit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very nice.